everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Shelly Geigel with JNS Hobbies and Crafts and I have a beginner's 8x8 mini album tutorial. There are no specialty die cut spancy trims in this but you can always add your own if that's what you'd like. It is pretty basic and minimal in supplies. What I ended up using is the Heartfelt Creations Cottage Garden Paper Collection, and I love this color combo. So again, this is an eight by eight. We're about two and a half inches wide on the spine. Okay, let's get into this. So what we have over here is a large foldout, but it's also a pocket. And I just made some pitcher mats and I made some folders. And I could still place some patterned paper in there. Speaking of patterned paper, really quick, uh, after you see uh, what I put in here, you can get more into it and you will have enough. So this is what I had left after just doing this, the few I, I have in here. But you get a lot of good ones. You get some tags, cutouts, or you can use the more solid, the bigger you know, for bigger ones back in here. But you get a lot of good ones left. I I try to manage our, our paper so we had some good leftovers for our pitcher mats. So just so you know, a lot more can go in here. So there is our pocket and it's going to fold out for us. Great place here to plant a photo, plant a photo and you open it up, we have a pocket here and we have a pocket here. And this is just a little small one. Got a little tag in here, a small photo mat. I was able to get in there. And then over here, I just made another little folder. And this is just to show you what you can do. As far as the folder, you just make a, like a card base and you can place your patterned paper on there and place your photos inside place some solid colored cardstock or your pattern colored. So those are some options. And I do have a tutorial to help with picture mats like ideas, um, what I like to do. So for some inspiration. So there is that as well as far as videos. Over here is just a very large picture mat so I can place my photo here and still have some of the pretty paper. And this is just a little tag. And this is a side pocket. Slide everything back in. Over here we have what looks like a huge envelope here. It's kind of like a pocket envelope. It is magnetic and you can stuff this full. We do have some spacing on the side so I just have a couple of these inside there. Get that all back in there. Over here I decided to show you how to use ribbon instead of a magnet to close your album. It's very simple. And this is a fold out. You can place your photos here. You can even get a photo up here or down here if you wanted to cover that part of it. This is just a free floating picture mat that I had laid in there. Over here we have a pocket. I have some picture mats and tags in here. And this, I thought that would be fun, just to have a little thing. You can journal in there or place the little photos in there. All right, so we're going to this page. This page is a double pocket, but I decided since it is a spaced out pocket, giving you lots of room, there's like one eighth inch spacing in each pocket, so you can get more in there. I decided to make a magnetic latch here like a strap so that in case you tip your mini album and you don't have many picture mats in here it doesn't go flying out. Here's our first little pocket up front and it's not really little it does hold quite a bit and this is a good size picture mat and then back here I had a couple and a folder. So that's what we will be learning to do. You'll be learning to do a couple different types of pockets. You'll be learning fold outs, techniques, um, maybe some flower balancing, you know, as well as waterfalls. And speaking of waterfall, here we are. And this strap here just holds it all down for us. 
and especially in case you want to slide um, more picture mats in there, it'll help keep it all in. We were conserving paper because I wanted to make sure that you guys had a good variety of picture mats to cut up for your photographs at the end when I showed you all those papers. So we flip it up and we have some beautiful colors and you can just place your photo right on in there. Over here we have a magnetic fold out. There's just a little tag. You can journal here and you can slide a photo back up underneath there if you'd like. And we have a place here, place photos. Right here, this is just a, a little flip out. And you can place a photo here and here. And then more places for photographs. So, and that just holds everything down. This is just a pocket, a very large pocket. And uh, I put some picture mats in there. And coming to our last page, we have a double fold out and another one of these large spaced out envelopes. And there's a magnet that keeps it all in there. We do have a pocket up front. I got a little tag and some picture mats. Came out really pretty. Places just put photographs. Over here we have another pocket, little tag. And you can get another picture mat in there if you wanted. And then we open this up and we can store our photographs. Get in there. So, and as far as this, we this was our last magnets. So we didn't use a magnet to close this because this holds it all shut. So that is what we will be making today, and I hope you enjoy the tutorial. Let's move on into the materials list, and I do go over the materials quite detailed so that you can make your best judgment. Perhaps you have something similar in your stash, so you might want to use that other than buy something, and it will save you money in the long run. All right, we're moving into the materials list. So for today's tutorial, what you're going to want is one pack of the Heartfelt Creations Cottage Garden 12 by 12 paper pack. And there's 24 double-sided sheets, and this is plenty for what we're doing. It is absolutely gorgeous. These are This color palette is one of my favorites. But you can see that the colors are just beautiful, the prints. So we're going to want one of those. We're going to need two pieces of 12 by 12 medium weight chipboard, and we will cut this down. You're going to want some Tyvek. We're only going to need a couple strips off this, but Tyvek is what's going to hold the binding together, the covers to the spine. Um, in case your hinges wear out, this is what's going to keep it together. I'm going to be using the 110 pound white Coordinations Premium Card Stock. And this is a value pack. There's 25 sheets in here. And this is what our foldouts, our pockets, our inner pages are going to be constructed of. For the album wrapping, you're going to want two sheets of 12 by 12 white cardstock. 65 pound or 80 pound is perfect. 65 pounds a little more flexible, easy. I'll be using the American Crafts 80 pound. I won't be using any fancy trim on this. I thought I would leave it to where uh, it's very simple, this album for a beginner. But I am going to be using my die cutter to make my flowers. So I decided to go with the small wild rose stamp and the matching die so that I can cut it out. If you do not have a die cutter, you can stamp the image and cut around. These are fairly easy to do. and. Um, you get all these stamps in there. I'm also going to be using the stamp and die set from the Oakberry Lanes Blossoms and these are again easy. What I'm getting after these are the leaves and the very smallest flower and also the matching die. Colors I'm going to be using as far as inks 
is the Tim Holtz Distress Ink, and it's the Shaded Lilac. And what we're going to get out of that is this beautiful color that matches in. Along with that squeezed lemonade, I have some yellow in there. For my leaves, I will be using the peeled paint and the crushed olive for that. Now one other ink that I will be using, and I'm going to show you how beautiful these come out. It's this little teardrop, and it's by Dewdrop, and it's, one of, it's called Platinum Planet. And what I was able to do with that is stamp the image. Look how pretty these little white, creamy, silvery flowers are that match in perfect. But I stamped the image. Then what I did was I used the shaded lilac and then I just went on the edges. And it created these beautiful flowers that just absolutely look lovely together. Now for shaping, I just released a tutorial, flower shaping, and the, this flower and I believe this flower are in on that. And these are just singles. But as you can see, these colors look wonderful together. Another thing that I'm using is the prills. And that is what you see on the inside of my flower. You can choose any color you want. I'm using lemon chiffon, or you can use white or any color that you wish to do. But that's what's in the inside of my flowers. I also am using the Wink of Stella. And Wink of Stella, what that does is put a shimmer. I'm not sure if you can see that. And I will be using that. And this is the Wink of Stella Clear. And I have Glossy Accents, which is going to gloss up my flowers and make them more sturdy for the cover. I will be incorporating some magnets. These are the basic gray. They're the large magnets. There's 12 in a pack. They're very strong. And I will be using that. Adhesive. So what you're going to want is a good glue. And I'm using the Art Glitter Dries Clear. There's no glitter in it. And this is really good stuff. So that's my main glue for gluing some of the things down. And then you're going to want score tape. And you're going to want a quarter inch and a three-eighths inch size for this tutorial. And I have some left on here, so I'll use this before I break into a new pack. You'll want to make sure to download the materials and pre-cutting guide for this tutorial. It's free. And what that's going to give you is uh, how to cut your chipboard, what sizes. It's also going to tell you for your white cardstock what you need to cut it at and score it at. We do review each one of these cuts and the scoring as we tackle each section of this tutorial, just to make sure that I didn't make a mistake or you didn't make a mistake. So let's get started. We're going to be reviewing our pre-cuts for the album assembly. So first on our list, we needed two pieces of eight by eight chipboard and we labeled these covers. We also needed a two and a half by eight inch piece of chipboard, which was our spine. We cut two pieces of Tyvek that was one and a quarter inch by eight inch long. We then had a spine cover and that was four and a half inches by seven and a half inches. And that was with our 110 pound cardstock. We also cut two pieces that were seven and a half by seven and a half. And we labeled this inside page cover. And these also were done with 110 pound cardstock. We had two pieces that were 10 by 11 inch. We called this our album wrap. And these were either 65 pound or 80 pound. We had four pieces that were seven and a half by eight and one eighth. These were done on our 110 pound cardstock. We won't be using the 65 pound cardstock anymore. And let's go over the scoring. So we are seven and a half inches by eight and one eighth. 
And what we did was we laid this on our scoring board. So we were eight and one eighth inch across. We scored each one the same and it would be seven and five eighths. And that's all to our pre-cuts. What we're gonna start off with though is our two 10 by 11 album wraps. And we're gonna need our score tape for this and we're gonna grab our quarter inch. And what we're gonna do is, and this might make it helpful for you, I know it is for me sometimes. At the top, we're gonna be 10 inches tall on each one. So I like to just put a 10 at the top so I don't mess it up. And that gets covered. On one of your pieces, right over by the edge here, without going over, we're gonna lay our quarter inch score tape. One rule to making mini albums, especially when you're using glue or your double-sided tape, is you will always burnish down your tape. And it's very important, so don't miss that part. Anytime you lay glue or your score tape, you're gonna to wanna to burnish it down. And by burnishing, what that does is it gets the air out from underneath the tape and your paper. When you have air left underneath that tape, you're going to risk getting liftage. The air underneath will start drying out and spreading and that's when you see your liftage. Another tool that was not listed that you might want to have handy is a craft knife. That's what I like to use to get the backing off my score tape there. And we may use it here and there in the tutorial as we get going. So I have one side with the score tape. I peeled it off. I'm going to set this off to the side for a minute and show you something that might be helpful. This is my paper cutter and I have a flat edge up here. And what I'm going to do is I have my 10 at the top and my flat part of the paper is going to go up against that to keep me straight. This one, we're not gonna cut it, but we're gonna put it up against that flat part too. And I'm just gonna overlap over the tape. No more, no less. And this, sometimes you still get it on crooked, it's okay, but it's help, it helps me. And if you're a little off, it gets covered at this point of what we're doing anyway. So once you have that down, we're gonna burnish. And that's, all good. The next part is really easy and what I want you to do is grab your pencil and this will make placement much more easy especially when you get score tape involved and trying to get your covers and spine on straight. So I'm going to grab my two 8x8 eight eight covers and my chipboard spine. I think what I'm going to do with this is start with my spine. You see where we have a seam here? Well we want that seam to come somewhere in the middle and I'm going to place this and I should have about an inch here and an inch here and I'm going to place this as straight as I can centered top to bottom and then I'm just going to draw around it now you won't see any of this because of course when we wrap and do our other things it does get covered up so just kind of draw around this so that you have it fairly straight there Next, I'd like you to take your chipboard covers and you're not going to put it up right up against that. You're going to leave yourself about 3 16 or even a quarter inch spacing between your pencil line and the side of your chipboard. And you're going to want to get this on straight and try to line it up with that as best you can. And you should have plenty left over off to the side here for wrapping. So I think I'm pretty straight. And if you get it a little off, it's, it's going to be okay, but just try to do the best you can. So we're going to draw around this piece. Just, this just makes it easier when we're putting our chipboard down with the adhesive to get it where it needs to go. So there's that. And we're going to do the same thing here and leave yourself about 3 16 even a quarter inch, whatever you're comfortable with. And we are going to draw on this one too. If you need to use your ruler, do so. But this, this helps me as well. So now we have our spacing in between. We can set this off to the side. And again, you should have a good inch or so left over. 
Okay, we're gonna get our pieces here. We've got our covers, our spine. Let's grab, I think we're gonna grab our 3 8 inch for this. And all we're gonna do first is we're gonna place our score tape around the outside edges of each one. Kind of like a picture frame is what I say. And we'll burnish it all down once we get it going. We're gonna do the same with this other piece as well as our spine. Just get that all the way around. I've got my score tape around each one of these pieces. Uh, one tip about score tape, that is if you have lotion on your hands, wash it off. Uh, the lotion comes in contact with the adhesive and it, and it lowers down the potency. So I always wash my hands and before handling the score tape because it's almost impossible not to even get your fingers in it. Next thing we're gonna do is go straight down the middle with each one of these. We're going to come over here and I think we will lay two pieces down each side on our covers. I think our spine piece is fine. We don't want any bubbling of the paper or liftage over time, so better safe than sorry to do it now, especially investing the time that we do and pouring our hearts into these albums. Um, you get liftage and it's not fun to try and fix. So now that we have our pieces, we're gonna take a moment and we're gonna burnish it down really good, each one. Sometimes when you're running your, your tool, your scoring tool or bone folder, you will actually hear crackling noise and that noise is getting the air out. Okay, we are ready. We can grab our album wrap. And I'm gonna start with the spine. We'll just release the score tape backing. And we will place it in that little area that we made with our pencil. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with these. We're going to release the score tape and we're going to place it inside those squares we made. Remember we have that spacing in between so don't butt it up against on this style of an album. Some albums um, that I teach are with no spacing but that's a totally different animal and uh, I do have some of those out that are older tutorials and I'll be doing some in the future as well. But for this, when you're wrapping like this, definitely have to have that spacing. And I believe I will be doing soon a no wrap style album to where we can do without the spacing. Okay, these are eight by eight and you just wanna make sure that you are straight and even with the bottom of the spine as best you can. Get it in that square. And we'll do this one as well. And placing it. I think that's pretty good. Okay, we can flip this over and do a little burnishing. So I'm just going to use the back side or the edge of my tool to help that out. Now, when we start to wrap this in a moment, we we have a couple things we need to do first. Uh, if you get the splits, um, I will give you some tips on what you can do to either hide it or to fix it. Next, what we need is our Tyvek strips before we do any wrapping. What's gonna happen is we're gonna lay our score tape 
and we're just going to place that right over that little spacing, our little valley there on each one of these. I think I'll use my 3 8 for this, it's a little wider, and we'll just get it on that. Now Tyvek can crinkle up a little on you or wrinkle, do not worry about that, it's okay. And for this, actually let's just go one on each side. I think we'll be okay. Let me look here in just a moment, but we may have to put one down the middle. Let's see. We should be just fine with those two strips. All right, we're going to burnish. and we're going to place them. If you get one side on a little more than the other, it's okay, so long as you were covering and you got it on both sides of your chipboard. So I think I'll just place this down. And if you get it on crooked, it's okay as well. you won't see it. But as you can see, as I'm burnishing, I got some wrinkles. I'm not going to worry about that. We'll get the other one on here. Now, sometimes there's seams on this, and I'm not going to worry about this too much, but if it bothers you, what you can do is take your glue and just dab a little glue in there and press it over and burnish. Okay. I want to be able to see where my valleys are there. All right. What we're going to do next is kind of condition the paper. And over here, what we're going to do is take our hand and slowly start bending it in. The thicker the paper, the more chances to get the splits. And again, if you get a little bit of the splits, I'll show you how to repair that or give you some ideas on how to fix that. Most of the time when you get splits, it's where seams are in the paper. And so I've used my hand to do that. Next I'm going to take my tool, whether it's this or this style. Uh, don't use your tip, use the rounded side and just go up against the side there to help it. And then we're just going to softly kind of help it over. We're going to do that with each side, top and bottom. and then the top. And we'll do it down here too. Now, if you got your pieces on crooked, and this seems to be crooked, maybe it's a little shorter over here, longer over here, we do have our pieces that are going to go over this, so you won't be able to see that. Okay, I think we're pretty good there. Let's lay some score tape, and then we're going to miter the edges, and I'll show you how to do that. I am going to use my quarter inch, I think, for this. And what I'm going to do is right underneath that chipboard there, I'm just going to go all the way around this piece. 
laying it down on my paper underneath there. And next what I'm going to do is go on the edge should be okay but if you'd like to place another row you can just for extra strength when we do wrap around it's up to you if you've been making mini albums and you know what works for you I am going to do it because I have that thing better safe than sorry and over here and we're going to spend a moment to burnish all of this Okay, let's grab our scissors and what we are going to be doing is clipping the edges to make sure that when we do wrap the corners we get a nicer look. So here is the edge corner of my chipboard. You'll want to measure out about 1 8 inch or you can do it eyeballing it. Now you can cut this any way you want. Like I said, it's going to get covered so long as you have something there to left over. Now one thing is is when you were cutting all your white cardstock, you'll want to keep all your leftover scraps because we will be um, using those. Use those first in your pre-cuts, but anything left over in case I add in some other things that we need in the album, maybe last minute thoughts for myself, we have some. Alright, and I think I got that down pretty good. It's time to wrap. So let's start with, let's start with the sides. We'll just remove the side here and we will fold that over. Let's get our tool out and burnish that down. We're going to do the same over here. Pull it over and burnish. Okay, let's release the score tape from down here. Don't wrap yet because we do need to tuck those corners. And I'm going to show you two different ways you can do that. You can do it with your fingernail or you can do it with your scoring tool. All I'm going to do is come and push in that edge. Just come and push it in like that. Okay down here, same thing you can do. If you don't want to use your nail, you can take your tool and just go around the edge like so. Just kind of tuck it in there. Okay. Alright, once you have that, then you can press it down. I like to start in the middle and then work my way out and get that down. One thing you're not doing is pulling and stretching. You've already made your creases, so that's not necessary. We're going to burnish this down. And here's the thing. If you get some puckering down here, take the flat side and press it down where your rep was. Okay. You can press it in on the corners, but puckering will happen sometimes from that tuck and you just got to push it down. So let's do the same down here. Grab your tool 
and push them in. And we are wrapping. And burnishing. So now you should have a nice wrapped album. So we're not going to crease it just yet, pull up our sides. We'll just leave it as it is. The next piece that we're going to need is our four and a half by seven and a half spine cover. And where this is going to place is we'll actually put our score tape on the side we wrote on and it's going to place evenly over this. And we're going to have even amount of spacing. So you'll probably have a quarter inch here and a quarter inch there. This particular piece I cover completely with score tape. And I like to start by going around the edges first, like a picture frame. Then I fill it in, just to make sure I got all those edges. If when you are tearing off your score tape, going around here and you have some peeking over the edge, you'll definitely want to uh, clip off anything that overhangs. We put the time in. We don't want a sloppy looking album. We want something looking nice and clean and I'll clip off the edges as soon as I'm done. So now I'm just going to uh, place my score tape right next to each other until this is completely filled up. So some of you have seen the video where I showed a picture of my newest little family member for a baby, Tanner, small little husky mix. And, um, He's not that small anymore. In fact, he is uh, 60 pounds. He's seven months, seven and a half months. And he's uh, just about bigger than Sissy now, which is pretty big. <laughs> so he's going to be a big one. I think he has a little Malamute in him, to be honest. All right, so I have it completely covered and I'm burnished. This is where we check ourselves. You see the overhang? We want that clipped off just to make sure that we are pretty clean, especially up through here. So I look pretty good. And if you want to make marks on your chipboard, like laying this down, you can see where your valleys are. If you can't, just kind of run your nails down so you can see where that is. But again, this is gonna place right over evenly. So what you can do if you are a perfectionist, you can just kind of make a pencil line on one side so you know when you place it, it's going to go there. As far as top and bottom, we're just going to have even, about a quarter inch, quarter inch or so. Just something even. Where is my tool? Here it is. So let's do this together. And I did place an extra little piece of quarter inch so that I could make sure that everything was covered here. The reason why I, I completely cover this piece is because when I lay it down and I burnish down and I pull in the sides, and maybe some of you have made albums before and, or maybe used glue, have noticed maybe some bubbling up. This will prevent that. So long as you burnish it down and uh, you, we've got this completely covered so there's no chance of any air getting in there. And this piece is very important because what's going to happen is, is our page hinges are going to be laid on this side of it. Okie doke. Let's see. I made a pencil mark. And I think I'm about a quarter inch. And I'm watching to make sure that I'm going to stay straight because this is what's going to keep your pages straight. And I'll just place it. Now the burnishing. Make sure I get that really good. Definitely don't skip this part, guys. And the edges. All right, let's test it out. So your albums could be very stiff to start. It will loosen up a little bit, a little. 
we're going to place our hand right down on that spine. And you might want to kind of look if you can, but it, placing it right in the middle will ensure you got it in the right spot. I then want you to place your hand underneath your cover and slowly pull it up. You will see your crease, but you should not see any bubbling up here if you did it the way I, I instructed to do. So we're just gonna, we're not gonna manhandle it. We're, we've gotta loosen up some of the fibers. We're just gonna slowly pull it up. And it's only gonna go so far, so it's not gonna flop all the way over. You'll rip yourself out because books aren't really meant to do that. So this is as far as I'm going to go, and I know my book will loosen up over time. You can attach a dress hook and eye, which I've always done in the past, but with this particular one, we're just going to leave it. I try to do minimal supplies on this, especially during this COVID, and so many people are out of jobs, and uh, it's, it's, you know, hours are cut. And I know I've felt the financial hurt of that as well. So we'll do it again over here. Just slowly move it in. Kind of let it bounce itself about back a little. And that's as far as I'm going. So here is the album. Like I said, it's going to want to flop open. As soon as we get our stuff in there and we give it some time, it will loosen up a little. I did not get any splits, and I'd use the 80 pound, but I have used it in, in the past and split right here. So let's talk about if you did get splits, especially on the seam. What you can do is take your glue. If it's minor, you have shards sticking up, dab a little bit of your glue, make sure your hands are clean, and run it in one direction. Don't go like this, just kind of run it and let it sit. Your glue will start drying quickly. If you keep messing with it, it's going to tear it. So just get it over where it should be, tap it down, and you're good. Same goes for over here. If you have major splitting and that does not correct it, what you can do is as soon as we get our cover in place, you can either get some wider ribbon that will match in. I would go with a white satin on this particular one and you can wrap it over the edges and do that or lace lace is a wonderful one to use is to put lace around but wait until we are done with the cover your album isn't going to get any worse so those are some tips for us and i just cleaned my desk it looks like i've got some pencil marks on this so there we have that. Let's continue on with getting the rest of this in there so we can start decorating the cover. The next two pieces before we put in our inner pages, we want the seven and a half by seven and a half inside page covers. And we will be placing the score tape on the side that we wrote on. Each one of these are gonna be the same. So I'm gonna show you. We're just going to go around the outside edges like a picture frame. And we're also going to clip off any score tape that overhangs because you will be able to see. This album's going to come out so nice. Okay, for this we're going to go one down the middle. And I think one on either side will be plenty for this. And we're going to do the same exact with this one. Once you've clipped any overhang of score tape and you've completely burnished this down, it's time to get these down. And let's get our book open. What this is going to be is the cover front and back to our book. Now, you notice how we place this piece of cardstock over our spine to cover up our sides and it's also our page hinge guide for us. When we place this, we're gonna remove the score tape and we're gonna line it up with the top and bottom and we'll leave about a half inch here and I think about a half inch over here. And we will place this and we will burnish it and we'll do the same over there. And 
you will hear the lawnmower of my neighbor going in the background. It's so hard to get a completely quiet uh, tutorial anymore, especially with everyone, a lot of people still being out of work and just everything. But that's okay, we can live with that. So when we place it, we want to make sure we're even top and bottom, and we are even going across the page, as best you can anyway. I think that's on pretty good. I'll burnish that in just a moment, and we're going to release the score tape backing from this side, and we'll do the same on the back. And we will make sure that's straight and even and get that on. Okay, let's do our burnishing, especially around those edges, guys. We are all set, and this should look really nice. So now it's time for those page hinges. And what we did was we did the seven and a half by eight and, and one eighth, and we scored over on the side, we went over that. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to fold on those score lines here. And we will use our tool to help it out on each one. Okay, so here is my pieces, and we'll be looking at it with the peak up. We're going to take our 3 8 inch score tape. I'm going to get a straight edge up there, make it more easy for me. And right there in that little flap, we are just going to lay our 3 8 inch score tape right down, and be sure that you do not get it on your score line. Once we have that down, we're going to burnish. If you can see any score tape, you definitely want to clip that off because it will be seen. And if you have any overhang of that adhesive, dust will accumulate and it will look dirty. So let's do that with each one of our pieces. And these are our inner pages. And this is going to look upside down, my writing, because my thing. So I'm just going to erase that so it doesn't mess anyone up or me thinking my pages go in the right way and I get something on upside down. I've made all the mistakes you can possibly even think of that can be done over the past several years and you just learn to fix it. And it always can be fixed even some of the worst mistakes. And we got the last one going here. Now, putting on these page hinges are very easy on how I teach how to assemble your album. And it will stay down. Now, I have heard that some people will also use their art glitter glue on top of this. And the reason why is I think it's climate. Um, it might be humidity or what it is, but they say that they also put the glue down to, for reassurance so there is no liftage. So here we go. Now, you see the top and the bottom of your inside cardstock on there. What I want you to do is just pull up one side. Here's the sticky, here's my hinge, what I'm going to do is just place that right up against and it's going to be even with the bottom and top because they're the same. And that's going to be your guide to getting that on straight. Just make sure you press it on against and once you have it, perfect. Now we burnish really good. So your first one is in the book and this is how easy it is for the rest. You don't have to worry about things getting really out of whack here. This next one is just going to butt right up against the other one. 
and we're going to place it. Now, in the case that you do get it on a little bit crooked, the chances are nobody's going to notice once you have all your decorative paper in here and uh, you'll be fine. You'll be the only one criticizing yourself. So, But after about a month you'll forget about it and probably won't ever notice it. So there's our third one in. See how easy that is? And now we're going to get our last one in. Now we'll have a little bit more of a gap back here, not too much, but that will make it easier for what we do back there with that extra spacing needed. So here is what your album should look like when you're looking down at it. So I'm going to take another moment, make sure I got that burnished down really good. And we are all set. The assembly of our album, the base, is done. Let's move on in to decorating the outside. And that is my, the funnest part. For decorating the outside, we did have some pre-cuts, and there's no scoring on these, but we had one piece that was four and a quarter by six and a half, and we labeled that as a backing. We had four small squares that were one and a half inch by one and a half inch, and we just called those squares. And we had one that was one and three eighths by four and a quarter, and we called that a title backing. Let's begin by getting in our paper pack, and we will want these two pieces. And we're going to cut them, actually we're going to cut them identical. So we're going to grab both of these out. On the back it looks like this. The first thing we're going to want to do is take off this trim piece. So let's do that really quick. And I'm going to double mine up when I do this. Now one thing is when I teach tutorials, we cut the decorative paper together and I actually show you where to cut. So you have the same leftovers and you have the same pieces so your album will come out identical to mine. I'm not going to ask you to cut down, up, over. I'm going to stay consistent as I always do and I think it's easier. So we always start over here uh, and, and I'll tell you to measure over this way. So we may be turning our paper and looking at it like this and then measuring over. So let's just double these up to where they are, how they're supposed to look. We are going to turn it looking at it like this. We're going to over here, we're going to start and we're going to measure over seven and seven eighths inch and cut. So I'm going to do that really quick. Seven and seven eighths. All your leftover pieces, whether it be your white cardstock or your decorative paper, we're going to make two piles. One is for our leftover cuttings for our decorative paper, and the other is for our white cardstock. This is called our reserve pile or our scrap pile. So we're going to stick these in our reserve pile because we're reserving them to get after, um, to grab it later on in the tutorial as needed. Okay, so this is what we have. What we're going to do now, and I got mine doubled up, is we're going to measure over two inches and we're going to cut. So two inches. One of these we're going to stick off to the side. We're going to need this for our spine. And they're both identical, so matters not which one. We're just going to stick this one in our reserves. So this is what we have here. Now we're going to measure over 7 and 7 eighths inch and cut. So I like to do this in the beginning so you can kind of see what I'm doing. And then these two go in our reserves. 
And if you're not used to doing it like this, um, you're used to taking other tutorials, you'll get used to how I do this real quick. So one is going to be for the front and one is going to be for the back. But what we're going to do with both of these is flip them over and we're going to apply our score tape. We can use our quarter or our three eighths. I'm just going to use my quarter inch at this point. And I'm just going to go around the outside edges of both like a picture frame. Since we don't have a lot of heavy embellishments like frames and stuff like that, we'll be okay with not completely covering or putting more than necessary as far as the score tape goes. And we're going to go one down the middle and we'll put two strips on either side of that. And then we're going to do the same with this one. So let's get this one ready to go. I got the score tape on both of the front and back decorative papers, so those are ready to go. Let's tackle this piece. We're going to do the same thing as going around the outside like a picture frame. And there are no heavy embellishments going on this. We will want to make sure that we don't have any score tape maybe going, peeking over the edges. If so, we definitely want to clip that off. And I'll check mine here after I'm done laying my pieces and burnishing. So I'm just going to go one down the middle. It looks like this tape is done. I'll grab my other one. I'm just going to put that there. Okay, so I'm going to check this out and... I see maybe a little bit there that got over the edge. That one's ready for burnishing and I'm going to check this one. And I look pretty good on that. And a little down here. Might want to clip that off here. Okay, so really quick, let's take a moment and burnish down all of our score tape. If you're new to my tutorials, one thing that you will get out of this is a start to finish, of course, but also you'll you'll learn different techniques and and uh, sometimes I'll walk us through why we I do things the way I do. So you might be able to pick up some tips and tricks along the way. So let's grab our album, and what I'd like you to do is look at it. The spacing that has a little more, that's going to be our back. So what I'd like you to do in pencil, it's going to get covered, is write back and flip it over and I want you to write back. That way we're not with the big space in the front when we need it in the back. So, Alright, let's tackle this. The first one we're going to do is the cover. And if you'd like to open up your album, just make sure you don't mess up your, uh, your pages inside. What's going to happen is we're going to remove the score tape. And this is going to fit in there. And what you're going to have is equal spacing. Just make sure that you are not over onto your crease where your spine hinge is there. But we're just going to place it and make sure we have even amount of white cardstock showing. One thing we do is we conserve paper in my tutorials as best I can for what I'm doing. And we also use our scrap or our reserve pile quite a bit to save on cutting into new pieces. Okay, a uh, tip really quick. So I've got all the score tape backing off. Score tape is not forgiving once you put it down. So if you put it down cattywampus, a little off, it's going to be crooked. There is a tip that what you can do is place a little bit of your wet glue in the corners or right in the top and start with the top. When you put the wet glue, it may give you a little wiggle room there. So I'm going to try and keep my head out of the video 
And if you don't get this on exact, it's okay. Remember, these are made with love and we're not machines. And chances are you won't be able to tell. Okay, so I got that down and I'm going to burnish it really good. And there is mine. So I'm going to open mine back up. Split it and I'm going to look here. And I'm going to do the same thing with the spine. Now, the spine cover. Now, one thing is, is you'll want to look where you are at the top here and here with your decorative paper. And you can use that same technique with the glue if you need to. Put a little glue on the top and the corner so you can position it the way it's supposed to go. I'm just going to get this off. Now you can place it down like this in between your hinges, but be very careful because it can be deceiving. Um, I myself like to put it up. And what we're going to do is we're going to put it right in the middle and try to stay even with the other top. And that's why um, laying it out is always e easier, but can be deceiving. Do not worry about the extra white on the sides of your album. And if you get this on crooked, don't worry about it because we do have strips that are going to lay on the side there. So I'm going to burnish that down. Get those edges. And now I'm going to place the back one. And I got my score tape going the wrong way. I usually like it up and down, but I turned it and I'm going sideways. No matter. It's going to do the same job. Alright. Whoops. One more. And I'm going to look over here first and try to line that up at the top. Make sure the bottom. Hopefully get this on straight. Just take your time with this. There's no rush. If you need to pause the video, and if it takes you five minutes to get this on right, take the time. Your pause button is your best friend when it comes to making these mini albums and going by the uh, tutorials. Okay, next thing here, what we're going to do is in your paper, we're going to get a couple pieces off here, but in your paper pack, what you're going to find is this print. And on the back, it looks like this. First things first, let's take off that trim piece really quick. <clears throat> so I got mine off. The first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to be dividing this up. And we're going to cut down this way. So you see where the gray and the green, that line in between there, we're going to cut all the way down. So we're going to do that really quick. This is what we have. Now we can cut across here and here. And you're going to need to save this piece and this piece. This one's going to go in our reserves. And I'll show you. So these two pieces we want, and this one's going in our reserves. And what I think we're going to do is, you see this strip right here, the one with the birds on it? We're going to place this on our paper cutter, and we're going to divide and get that strip off. So this is what we have. The next thing that I want you to do is we are going to cut this right down the middle. And that can be tricky, especially if you're using like the Fiskars like me. I'm going to grab this cutting board out. It makes it easier for me for getting a straight for that small of a cut. And I'm just going to try and get this as even as I can. So I'm just going to carefully cut this all the way down. I'm going to hold on to it because tendency to slip. Okay. Now on both of these, 
we can double them up or cut them individually, but we're going to measure over 7 and 7 8 inch and cut. These little pieces that are left over are going to go back in our reserves. I know they seem tiny and what could you use that for, but believe me, I can find ways to use certain little scraps. All right, so for these, all we're going to do, and I think we're going to use glue because it's very narrow, but we will use glue for this, is we will apply this. And if you don't have a precision metal tip uh, that, that you get, uh, that you can buy extra with this glue, you definitely want to. It's going to help you out because you don't need a whole lot of this glue to get the job done. So this is the side that I have. You can go the other side if you want but this is the one I have and I'm just going to look at it like this because it's very deceiving when I open it up and I might get it on wrong. I'm going to come over here to the left. I'm going to line that up with the top and bring it on down. And this will also, if you're a little crooked, make it so it's a little straighter. There. And we'll burnish. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. So as you can see, we can make great use. Just make sure you get those edges there so there ain't no snagging. Perhaps your book is going on a shelf or something. And I'll face them like this and place it. So now I'm going to make sure when I place this, because you may have cut a little bit different and mine is just a hair wider than the other. I'll make sure I leave the same amount of white. So if I have to overlap onto this other one, I will. Just make sure I get it straight there. And that's what we have. So it looks pretty good so far. Remember this, that we set off to the side, and you have your four and a quarter by six and a half. We're going to place this down, and it looks like we're going to need to chop this down a little. I was going to do something else, but I decided not to, so we're just going to do that. So we'll apply glue to this, and what we're trying to do is make sure that we have even amount of white cardstock on the sides and the top for right now. I'm getting that on there even. And you'll have the white down here, bigger of course. And that looks good. It's a nice little white frame. What I'm going to do is stick this on my paper cutter and I'm going to trim this down and I'll leave the same amount of white, the spacing of the white, underneath there. Okay, next one. Let's get our title backing and this piece. We're going to apply glue to this and we're going to center that so that we have a nice pretty white frame. We'll be able to place one of these down on our page. We're going to wait for this one. We still have another piece to the puzzle for that one. This one. We're going to glue that down to the cover. Make sure you're going the right way. You've got this at the top. And we will apply our glue and just kind of center that. And I'm going to try not to get my head in the video, but just stick that in there. I'm trying to keep even. And that's what mine looks like. Very easy. Okay, <clears throat> in your paper pack you will find this print. The one you're looking for is one that has these sentiments on the side and on the back it looks like that. First things first, let's take off this trim piece and then we're going to stick it on our paper cutter and cut down this way. And I will 
show you what mine looks like as soon as I get that done. So this is what I have here. This is going to go into my reserves. And now, always and forever. And I am going to put this on my paper cutter and cut that out because I'm afraid that if I use my scissors, it's going to be uh, crooked. <laughs> so I'll do that really quick. And the rest is going to go into reserves. So let's grab Always and Forever, and I'm really debating about backing this one too. Now the reason why I do a lot of backing and framing with white is because it actually looks good. And let's see, that is not 110 pound, here we go. And that's what I think we're gonna do. So grab a, a small scratch piece of white card stock out of your scraps, the 110 pound, and we are going to back this one. See, I told you we'd be using some scraps up. So you may not have this piece, you may have a different one, but it doesn't matter. Now, once I have that down, you notice I have that white border around. I'm gonna cut around using my paper cutter so that I have the same border. It's not completely even, that's okay. So now you can see that it's framed. It looks really neat and clean. And we're gonna glue that right on to the center of this one. And make sure my writing's going the right way, the background writing. And that's down. Okay, we're going to stick that off to the side. We're going to get some other pieces ready to go. And what we have is the one and a half by one and a half inch squares. In your paper pack, it's usually the last sheet, you're going to find this. And on the back, it is this. Let's take off that trim piece. I got my trim piece off. Now this is very hard to cut using a paper cutter to get in without cutting into anything else. I am going to use my scissors and carefully cut out and divide these pieces. Because that's all we want to cut into is what you see. You don't want to cut into any of this else yet, this other stuff yet. And I'll put this in my reserves. So anytime we take a fresh sheet and we've made a cut on it, it goes right in our reserves. So here are the one and a half, one and a half inch squares. If we glue these down, to the middle, you'll notice we have a beautiful border once again. So we're going to glue all these down to our squares and we will set these. And then the next thing I want to do is get our flowers on. Now you can arrange your flowers any way you want, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to do mine. As soon as I get these all done. I love making mini albums. It's my favorite thing to do. There's so many options, so many different ways to do, and the paper alone just totally speaks to me. It's like, if I see paper, it's like an instant idea <laughs> on what I want to do. All right, let's grab our book and we're going to split this right down the middle and we already know that's pretty pretty well done there and the next thing we're going to want to do is plant these and so before we glue them, these down we're going to place these down and I'm just putting them right in the center between those and I will arrange these how I want to get them I would like them I think I like the birds at the top. Just like that. 
So I'm going to leave these down actually and tackle each one. And I'll make sure I get some the spacing in there fairly even. The lines in the paper are going to help you stay straight too, just so you know. So that's how they are going to place. I'll grab this one. So when you're making your own mini albums and certain elements you're laying down just don't pop enough or it just gets lost in the paper decorations, um, you can, actually that looks pretty good too, you can always back with, see if backing with white cardstock helps to separate the colors. So you get a better focal point, you know. I think I'm going to go like that. So that is a helpful tip, especially if you're working with some really busy paper. Nope, looks pretty straight. So that looks pretty good to me, and I hope you like it too. I'm going to take a moment to make sure that glue bonds with my paper. And now we are ready for some leaves and some flowers. So in my Flower Shaping 2020, you will find how to make this one. You will find how to make layers. And these were done with the Wild Rose small wild rose and then for these this are the these are the small tiny the tiniest petals from the oh, oakberry lane and that's the only small flowers off that I'm using plus the leaves so I believe I stated before that I used the platinum planet and I stamped the image and this is what it looks like stamped and then I took the other ink, which is Shaded Lilac. And I think I got a dauber here. And all I did was I went straight on the edges. I didn't go like this. I just went straight on those edges. And then you just shape it, just like in that tutorial for a single flower. Now for this little rose bud, it's a single flower and I just pulled them in and glued where it needed to keep it shut. And the crushed olive, I daubed some on the top. To prepare for this tutorial, I ended up making a lot of leaves. I will be making lots of, using a lot of, of leaves. I don't think I'll be using all of these, but at least I have some extra. I figure while I'm making them, I might as well uh, make some extra for other projects because I always use leaves. Now I did do a little overkill on the flowers but uh, you'll only need like from that flower shape and tutorial one of these. Um, the rest are pretty much two or three layers smaller ones and then I just got one that's slightly larger here and then a bunch of the singles uh, little ones and I did do some coloring of singles of like that so that's what I've got going here I don't know if I'm going to be using all that but let's go ahead and grab our album I'm going to find something to prop up underneath here so it doesn't slide off when I'm trying to show you what I'm doing I think that'll hold it there so we're going to need one of these and we're going to use some of these with yellow on it and I definitely want to use some singles so I'm going to arrange this really quick and I'm going to get some of my leaves out and then we will place them together and if you're using different flowers that's fine you can arrange it anyway or try to follow along with it so I think I want to do something like this and I'm going to take all these pieces off here and glue them down so that you can do as well. So I'm just gonna slide these off. 
Here is the Always and Forever, and what you're going to want to do is just give it a slightly a little bend, not much. And I'm going to take these out. So I've got a leaf here, and we'll just go with what we got there. And I want to make sure I get some of these tips of the leaves. So. so that they don't snag. And we'll just go with it. Okay. I'm going to take this one, plant that right there. And this one right here. Here's that one bud I did. That one's wanting to, that one's wanting to move around on me. Gonna take a moment for that to dry. And what's gonna happen with this is this is gonna come up and meet the sides, and I'm gonna leave a little bit down, but first I want to be able to tuck this underneath there before I glue it down. So that will go there. And this isn't glued down quite yet, and I got another one. Oh, my dogs are so nuts right now. Oh my gosh, they're just going crazy. Okay, so that's the placement of those. And now I'm going to put this one down. Get some glue over here. Whoops. Crazy dogs. It's going to be a moment for the glue to grab. Get these on there. Alrighty, they're getting nuts, that's for sure. And not being nice. I'll be right back. Okay, got one more flower. And I think that's going to go right here. So I'm going to give this just a moment to dry. And that is all there is to the cover. And next we are moving on to the inside, page one, and how we read these pages is like a book. Page one, page two, page three, page four. So in case you have to leave the video, pause, take a video, uh, take a break, and if you try to come back and it doesn't pick up to where we left off, you'll be able to figure out what page you're on. I think that looks wonderful. We are now on to page one. We're 
on page one, and we do have some pre-cuts and scoring on a couple. So let's go over the first one. There's no scoring. We just did a three and a half by four and a half, and we just called it a pocket. We had two pieces that were seven by seven and a quarter, and we labeled them fold out. On each one, we laid them down on our scoring board, and we scored laying it so it's seven inches across. We scored it at a half inch and five eighths inch, and we did this with both of them. And we labeled them fold out. And then the last two pieces, there's no scoring. It was a four by seven and a half inch, two of them, and we just called it a large pocket. So very easy. In your reserves, you will find this beautiful print on the back. It looks like this. Right now we are about seven and a quarter inches across and that's perfect. That's what we need our base decorative sheets to be, about seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter. So we're going to turn it looking like this and we're going to measure over seven and a quarter inches and cut. So that is our base page that we will be working with. We're going to start off with our three and a half by four and a half inch pocket. We need to find the paper for that. And I think we're going to go with this. This is what we just cut off of here. So we're going to make sure we have the same leftovers. We're going to measure over four and a quarter inches and cut. So this is what you should have. We'll just turn that and we're going to measure over three and a quarter inches and cut. This is what we have left over. The purple's going to be, or the blue, I can't tell, the lilac is going to be up. But what we're going to do is center that in the middle so we have a white border. Very easy. And I want to show you something I added to the cover last minute. In just a moment, let me get that on there. Definitely burnish that down. On the cover with our white ribbon, all I did was I made a little bow and I tucked it right like that. All right, so for this, there are no hinges. This is just a straight little pocket. I'm just going to give a little bend, not much. And it's going to sit like this. So all we're going to do is get the short sides at the edges and then along the bottom long. And the opening is up here. We're going to come in a good half inch from the side and about a quarter inch from the bottom. And we'll place that. And we'll push in so it leaves a little gap. And then we'll just make sure that it glues down over here. So that is good. As you can see, I have just a little bit. And we'll definitely burnish that. So we can also place our photograph right here, as well as tuck some in the pocket. We're going to tackle the foldouts right now, so you should have two of them. So you're going to have your score lines off to the right, and you'll have score lines off to the left. So if you need to turn your paper over. We're going to fold on those score lines and use our scoring tool to crease. And I like to start by just trying to get my nails in there first to get it started. So we have a nice, clean, crisp crease there. Both fold-outs I have completed with the creasing. Now, with your peaks up right now and your hinge over here, you'll notice you have an inside score line and an outside score line. On the outside one, we're going to pinch it and crease it. And then we're going to hook it on. 
and that's going to match top and bottom with your decorated paper. So as you can see, I've hooked that back behind. Now, in order for it not to slip around or get crooked, I'm going to hold it. And then I'm going to grab it with my other hand and I'm going to flip it over. And I'm keeping pressure down so it does not slip. If it slips on you, you'll need to realign. And I'm going to keep my hand down, a little pressure, and kind of fold that back. And we're going to use some glue. And we'll fold that over and we'll burnish it down. Now when you do that, and make sure your glue is set, when you open up, make sure you don't have any glue seeping out in here. If you do, wipe it up. Okay, now we're going to fold back on that other scored line. And then we're going to push until it is how it's supposed to be on the sides. Just like that. So there's our first fold out. We're going to grab our second one and the peak is up over here, the outside and the inside score line. On that outside score line we're going to pinch, crease, and we're going to hook it back behind our base decorated paper and match it up with our other fold out. Right like that. And I'm going to pinch and hold it, keep my hand down, and glue it down just like we just did. burnish. Okay, I'm going to open it up, make sure there's no glue in that crease, and then I'm going to fold it back on the other one. And then I'm going to fill that it is flat on the sides, as best I can anyway. So there we have that. We're going to open up our left side and we're going to grab our magnets. Get those set for us. I'll grab a plus and a minus. So behind these, if you're using the same ones, they have an adhesive. If there's no adhesive, then you'll put glue down. But I'm going to come in probably about an inch in from the side, in the middle somewhere, and just press it down. Now in order to get this, because it's going to latch like that, what I do is I take its mate and place it on top. And then I'm just going to remove that. And this part is most important. Make sure your paper is down flat and you are flat over here and you're lined up. If you got it on a little crooked, this is where you can fix yourself. So just make sure you're flat over here as best you can. And then this, when you bring it over, don't pull it. Let it go and just kind of place it down and press. So now your magnets are set. Be careful, they're very strong. So just kind of open it back up there. Alright, we're going to start with finding our paper for over here and setting one of our pockets. In your reserves you will have this piece and on the back it's that beautiful green. What we're going to do is we're going to measure over six inches and cut this right in half. So this is what you should have. We're going to double these up. We're going to turn it so we have the tags partially down here. We're going to measure over seven inches and cut. These are the pieces that you want, and we'll just flip that right on over. We do have a pocket to put on this side, but this side will not have a pocket. If you were to lay this down and try to center it in there, you will notice it will give you a nice white border. 
it will also, from that outside score line, give you the same amount. You want to stay away from that outside score line. So we'll just apply glue to this to get this one on. And then we'll burnish it down really good. All right, I'm going to set this off to the side and we're going to grab one of our four by seven and a half inch pockets. Now there's two ways to do this. We can just lay our score tape, place it down so we have even overhang off each side and then wrap it back behind. But there's also another way that will give you just a little more wiggle room in that pocket. So if you were just to place this down, it matters not where you place it, and you were to bring this all the way up, and you can have even overhang for sure, is to slide this until you can see your full notch line. And then you can just put a crease to the right of that. And you can come over here, and if you need to adjust your paper a little bit, just make sure your line over here stays where it's supposed to go and then you can put a crease over here and that will help with folding a little bit better. I'm going to be using my quarter inch score tape and thankfully I had an extra pack here and we are seven inches this way, six inches across. We're going to place our score tape at the bottom of our panel here and we're going to burnish that really good. And we will remove the score tape. And we can fold these on those score lines. And the idea is just to bring this down to the bottom. Okay? Or just line it up however. We're going to press in the middle and press out. And then we're going to burnish that. Okay, and now we can wrap our flaps around the back. And it helps to use this. And we will glue these flaps back behind. Very simple. So this is a second way to make a pocket, and I like this way a lot. So we have some room in there. Let's grab this. We can now add glue to conserve on our score tape. And we can place this. And when you place this, remember, you're going to want to stay a good eighth inch away from that outside score line there. Just make sure you're not on it, or right next to it. I think that's good right there. And we're going to burnish that down really good. So our page is looking pretty good. Those colors look really nice together. And you should be able to latch. Let's find our paper to cover this. In your reserves, you will find these two long strips. They're about four, about four inches or so, I believe. A little more than four inches. It looks like four and an eighth or so. Anyway, we're going to double these up. And not only are we cutting for this pocket, but we're going to need something for this one too. So we might as well do it the same. So we are going to double these up. Our first cut is to measure over three inches and cut. These two pieces put in your reserves. So I have these doubled up still. We're next going to measure over six inches and cut. 
and these two little pieces will go in our reserves. So we'll just set that one off to the side. Let's place this down. I'm also going to show you what's called measure to fit. And what we're going to do, if you were to place this down, giving yourself just a little bit of white showing up here, you will notice that you are too long. I want you to scoot this over so you can see the side of your pocket and make sure you are straight with your line and we're going to measure to fit this. So with it placed, take your pencil, come down to the bottom where you can see your pocket and make a pencil mark on your paper. So I know I need to cut this off and I'll just double these up because they're going to be the same. I'll put these on my paper cutter and I will trim this so then it will fit. And then we'll put the leftover pieces in our reserves, that little strip. All right. So here we are, and I'm going to apply glue. First check to make sure. If you can see some of the white of your pocket on the sides, just make sure that you are uh, centered in between there. And we will put our glue. I hope you're enjoying this tutorial. We do go very slow in the beginning and after we've made some of these pockets and stuff we'll still go through the process of it but we'll be able to go and, and do it just a little bit quicker. You'll know what to expect. So that is what we have so far and it looks really good. So we're just going to close that up and we're going to find some paper for here. Looks like my camera did not take or turn on for this next part. Do not take a fresh sheet out of your paper pack. What you're going to have in reserves is something that looks like this because we did cut out always and forever and earlier. So what you're going to have is this. What we're going to do is turn this, what you have in your reserves, sideways. We're going to measure over seven inches and we're going to cut. What you're going to be left with is a long strip like this and then your piece like this. This little strip down here is going to go into your reserves. You will have the birds and when you're going to be cutting this piece here you're going to measure over six inches and cut. So what you're going to end up with is this piece. And because I'm editing this in, I am going to show you because we're, and then we'll continue on. But you're going to end up with this piece and you're just going to glue that right on down to your page with the magnet. So again, I am editing in after what I've already done. This is our page one. I just showed you how to get this print. To get the green in the back of your paper pack, you will have another tags page. If you're looking at the tags page, the tags are at the bottom. I want you to turn your page so the tags are on this side and the top would be over here. I want you to measure over seven inches and cut. So what you'll be left with is partially of those tags. So once you have your seven inch and you're gonna be by 12, you'll just look at it normally and measure over six inches and cut. And that's gonna give you your base page. Once you have that down, we can now apply glue to this and center it right there on the pocket. And then we can add some flowers, maybe some ribbon to dress up our page a little. 
and center that. Some leaves here. Now remember, we're going to be opening this way. You never want anything to overhang on the side that your hinge is because it will get caught sometimes depending on how you do it. So I'll be probably bringing those in a little bit. And I do have a larger flower that would look nice. And if you need to press down your flower a little more, but I think we got enough spacing in the book there. And maybe some white ones like that. So I think that's what I'm going to do there. So again, we're going to be careful with our leaves. They don't overhang. Whoops. And I like to press down my tips so they don't snag. And I'm going to measure this out, what I need. Right about there. At least I think. I'm all thumbs. That will look good. That sure looks pretty. I think I'll use my tool to press down in the center, make sure it grabs. And what do I want to do? That looked pretty too. I think I'm going to pull this one off to the side right here, tuck it in. Then if I need to mash it down a little, I can. All right, I think I'm going to use a little ribbon here and just make a little bow. I think I'm going to put that bow right there. Now one glue that my friend hooked me up on is the Fabric Tack. And I had tried this years ago and I was not impressed. And I think I got a bad bottle because she swore it up down and when I last time I was at her house I said alright I'll try it again and sure as heck it worked. And it's quicker than this to grab hold and um, I had gotten a really bad bottle years ago, so this stuff is pretty good for lace and uh, fabrics, and uh, so I like to use that now. It doesn't absorb uh, into the fabric as much as this, and it's much quicker to grab. And let's see here. We do have a little bit of spacing, and I'm going to grab a flatter, a little bit flatter flower, I think. And I think I'll place them. First, you, what you can do is check your flower. Like if I was going to place it there, I'll put this over and this over. Is it still going to latch? And it is. So. I've got enough spacing for that crease for that, so I am definitely going to place these down. And you don't want to cover up the opening there, so I'm just going to place that one and this one. Okay, I'm going to close this all up. We are done with page one. Very easy. It's easy when you go step by step anyway. We're going to flip this over and I've got glossy accents on my flowers and it isn't going to mess it up. You can use your quarter inch or your 3 8 inch. But we're just going to place it, go around the outside of the back of our panel here, of our page one, without going over and we are going to place it. So we'll start this by going like this. It is easier to get your score tape on uh, first before the flowers, but I'm not worried about my flowers getting messed up. 
So now I have quite a bit of fold outs and, and I got the embellishments. So I want to make sure this is going to stay. I'm just going to run two pieces on either side of that metal point. And we're not going to put this in our book until we've completed page two. And I kind of teach that now because it's easier to get page one in after you get page two in so you can line up with it. And then the rest of the pages you can just do. So my flowers are still looking pretty good there. So we'll set this off to the side. Page one is done. We are now on to page two. We're on page two, and this is a really simple page. So we only had one pre-cut, and that was a three and a half by eight and a half, and we called that a side pocket. In your paper pack, you will find this beautiful print. On the back, it looks like this. We're gonna take off that trim piece. The first thing that I would like us to do is to turn our paper this way. We're going to measure over seven and a quarter inches and cut. This is what you should have. And I think what we're gonna do is just turn our paper so our bicycle's over here, it's upside down. We'll measure over seven and a quarter inches and cut. Here is our base page and our pocket is actually going to place and I think it's going to go right here so we still have a little bit of the bicycle. So this is the same concept of placing a pocket like we did before except we're going to be placing our score tape along this side. And I'm going to use my quarter inch, place it down, and I'm going to burnish that. Now I'm going to turn this so it's easier and I don't get my head in the video, but my sticky is right down here. I'm going to give this a little bend and I'm going to place it all the way to the edge making sure I have e equal overhang. And I'll press that in the middle and press out. And then for sure we need to burnish so we make sure that gets done. Okay. All I'm going to do is roll these over to the back and crease. And we'll glue those down. Wipe up any glue for sure. Very good. Let's get our paper for this. I think I want to use that green that we have on the previous page. I think that's beautiful. So we have this. We're going to look at it where our tags are upside down. So the thanks and the best wishes, mostly those are used for cards. You can implement them into your mini album, especially if you have special pictures. But for this, I'm going to start over here. I'm going to measure over seven and a quarter inches and cut. So that's what we have. I will turn it this way and I'm going to measure over three and three eighths inch and cut. Let's see how we did before we apply our glue. We should have a nice white border over here and we'll leave a white border over here. That looks good to me. And we're going to apply our glue and we will center that side to side, top to bottom. That should fit nicely there. I think I got it. In your reserves you will have this piece and I think what I'd like to do is cut out these so let's do that. And 
As far as the colors go, I think I'm going to go with the birds. And I think with this, I'm going to put that back in my reserves. For what's over here, I think I want to get love. So we'll just hand cut these out. Try not to disturb the rest. Not always easy. Get that out. That looks really good. What I'm going to do here is just put a little glue in the corner. And I'm going to just kind of place it like this. Let's grab some of our leftover scrap white cardstock. And we're going to cut out and around this, leaving a little bit of a white border. And you don't have to be perfect, that's for sure. Let's see. Let's Actually, see. it didn't come out too bad that first try. I like that. So I'm going to apply some glue. I'll put it right here. I'm going to make a little bow again. Okay, the bow goes here. So I'll put a little bit of this on there. I don't know what that red is from. Get that down. And you don't have to do this like I am. You can do this any way that you would like to do. I think I'm going to get some leaf in there too. And sometimes you just have to clip stems off and just kind of work it the way you want to work it. Tips down. So no chances of it to snag. If you'd like to place your score tape on the back first before you do this, you can. So this is our page two and it is complete. I am going to wait for my flowers to dry completely. And then I'm going to flip it over and place score tape the same way we did before. We'll go score tape around the outside, like a picture frame, one down the middle, and we'll do a couple on each side. And then we're going to plant this in our book together. So I'll be right back.